Brenda Murray and this is Studio 56 and today I'm going to be interviewing the lovely Susan Greenstein and we're going to be talking about her gorgeous uh, work and we're going to be talking about urban sketching and uh, printmaking and if you're new to Studio 56 you should know that in addition to hosting free interviews like this one and free demos. We also produce online workshops and vacation workshops for artists. We have tickets still available this year to some of our gorgeous uh, upcoming vacation workshops. We'll be going to the French Alps in September with Renata Lahal. We have tickets available for our Paris workshop in September with Stephanie Bauer. And we have tickets still available for our workshop in Malta with Renata Lahal in November. And you can find out more about that from our website, www.studio56boutique.com. And now, if uh, you're unfamiliar with Susan, let me tell you a little bit about Susan Greenstein. Susan grew up in a household with parents who were passionate collectors of art from all around the world. And she knew from a young age that she wanted to be an artist. Susan got her BFA from Pratt Institute and went on to Queen's College, where she received a master's in art education. Susan has been teaching art for more than 35 years, first to children and currently to adults. She also was an editorial and children's book illustrator for over 10 years. And let's bring Susan into the call. She Hello. Is in. Welcome. Hello. Welcome. I'm excited to show people your beautiful work. Oh, yes, definitely. And um, I just wanted to thank you, Brenda, and Studio 56 for inviting me today. I'm really excited to share some uh, techniques, some printmaking techniques. And um, I just wanted to um, quickly just talk about what printmaking is. So for people that might not know, um, so printmaking is, it's many different forms of art, um, but the thing that, that uh, they all have in common is that you create an image on either a plate, um, which is usually a piece of plexiglass or some flat surface, or on a stamp, and you roll ink, not, um, not um, liquidy ink, um, that you use for um, calligraphy or for um, writing with, but it's um, almost like a, it's the consi consistency of paint. Um, and you uh, roll that into a very thin layer. And then whatever you have created, you transfer onto either paper or fabric um, or another surface that can receive the ink. Um, so there's many, many different ways that you can create printmaking. Um, but we're going to talk about three different ways that I have been using um, to extend my urban sketching so that I could um, create work that um, just uh, expands what I what I do when I'm drawing um, and it just brings it to a new place. And um, one of the things I love about printmaking in general is that it's it's full of what ifs. So um, you know, you can do a drawing and then you can say, well, what if I put this layer of another image on top of it? Or what if I draw on top of something that I've printed? Yeah. So um, we're going to, the three types of printmaking that I'd like to discuss today are um, um, stamp making, yeah. um, using styrofoam, um, and it's a special kind of styrofoam. It's like a page. It's like a flat piece. And... Um, it's used, I mean, it's it's very different than the styrofoam that you might get a package in. It's um it's created for drawing, for the purpose of drawing into it. Okay. So we're gonna we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then the last type of printmaking that I wanted to share was something called a trace monoprint. Okay. And um, and I'll go into that a bit later um, because that that has several steps to it that I'd love to share. I have so many questions. Great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, three types of printmaking. And um, I'm wondering um, if, if the images that you sent uh, me that we're going to look at today, um, sh if there's a one image that shows the three uh, different media that you're using. Um, 
Yes, I have three different, um, they're within, you know, I have a, a series of different um, images, but I will point out what each one is as we go, as we go through the, um, through the, um, the images that I sent. Right, right. Okay. So we are looking at stamps that I have carved and they're carved out of rubber. Um, there's actually one stamp that's, that's actually carved out of uh, an eraser. Um, but all the rest, there's a, um, a, a type of rubber that Speedball sells in any art supply store. And um, it's similar to a lino cut or a wood cut where you're carving the part that you want to um, be the color of the paper. And whatever, like for instance, in the tree, if you see there's a tree on the um, right hand, lower, uh, lower right hand side, uh -huh. all the area where you can see the pink. You can see that I've carved, I've gouged into the uh, rubber a little bit, and you can see some lines that remain. So those are almost like the kind of lines that you'll see in a woodcut or a lino cut. And the black image of the tree, that is still raised. I haven't touched that. I haven't cut anything. I haven't cut into that. So when I roll ink on top of that, that will print. And the part that I've cut away will be the color of the paper. Okay, so I wanna go back to the materials first. Rubber, I'm familiar with lino cuts. Uh, I've done that myself, but mm -hmm. rubber, I, I'm not aware of rubber. Is that a different thing from a lino cut? It's very similar. It's the exact same principle, only it is easier to carve. It's much, much easier. Um, and you can, you can cut it into uh, whatever shape you'd like. Um, and it's just, it doesn't have the same resistance. Um, so you can get some, you, you can get very, really um, highly detailed images, um, but you can also, you know, car carve out la large areas very easily. Um, the other thing that's really wonderful about it is that you can transfer, like if you've done a drawing on tracing paper, you can flip that over and transfer it just by rubbing your nail on the back of, um, the image and it transfers onto the um, the um, rubber really easily. Like from a pen, if you do it in pencil, you're saying? Yes, if you do draw on tracing paper with pencil, mm -hmm. when you flip it over, you can just rub on it, burnish it on the back, and it will um, it will transfer beautifully um, so that you have that to then carve into. Wow, so that makes it a lot quicker. Then yeah. drawing right onto the rubber, I suppose. Absolutely. And it's and and you know, if you draw it on on tracing paper, if you don't like what you drew or you want to change it, you can do that before you transfer it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So um you're you're carving into rubber and are do you do woodcuts as well? Um, I have come to really love carving rubber. So okay. that's what I use um most of the time. It would be the easiest thing, probably. Yes, yes. Okay. And these um, these uh, cut, wood, wood cuts, or sorry, what would you call it? Rubber they're cuts? They're stamps. They're rubber. Yeah, they're stamp. You know, they all have become stamps. because are these all rubber? Um, they're all rubber except for one. Um, there's a circular one. It's close to the top on the left-hand side. And somebody gave me um, that stamp as a gift. It's from India. Oh, and it's cool. carved out of wood. Yeah, yeah. But all the others are rubber. Okay, very cool, very cool. I love and that. And I teach, um, I teach printmaking, and um, this is um, someone just getting started. So, <clears throat> you know, starting to, to draw uh, what their image will be. And you can see there are uh, two tools to the left. Those are the carving tools that are used. And... Um, I have some of the stamps that you saw in the last um, image um, out for um, for inspiration. Um, and then you can, you know, the thing that's really nice about stamp making is that you can um, use something, the, a drawing that you've already done, or you can use an image that you see somewhere else, like either from a photograph or from a book. You can trace that and then create a stamp from that. So you must have quite a collection of stamps at home then. Oh yes, quite a quite a collection. <laughs> I have probably hundreds of stamps. 
yeah wow okay so when you say stamp after you've carved it do you do you um are you putting are you laying the, the rubber stamp down on the table and then uh putting what's the process you put the paper okay on top of it or the other way around yeah thank you for asking brenda so what you would do is you would um have ink rolled up in a tray or on a piece of plexiglass and you roll it out so that it's very thin yeah. Um, you you know and um and then you roll it on top of the stamp and then you can turn the stamp face down onto your paper so if you're doing that do you have to have some kind of handle so that you can um like drop it onto the paper though like getting your fingers in the way yeah it depends some stamps it just happens to work out better just to hold on to the stamp like if it's thick enough it's easy to hold on to if you go back to the last image, the first image, mm -hmm. I will show you that sometimes I, um, if you see the leaf that's on the upper right-hand corner, um, yeah. that's mounted on wood. So sometimes I'll mount them and sometimes I just use them as, you know, um, <clears throat> just in, in the form that they are and, you know, with the rubber. And if my hands get a little dirty, that's part of the process. Yeah. So the paper is on the table and then you're putting the, the inked stamp on top of it. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. I thought that's what it would be, but that, that's interesting. Huh. Wow. Okay. So uh, let's uh, move on. And I, I want to ask you about the ink that you use. Your art, it's an acrylic ink, did you mention? No, it's, it's a water-based ink. It's made by Speedball. Um, Speedball sells a lot of printmaking um, supplies. Uh, and it's sold in any art supply store and it's water base um, and you squeeze it out so that it's it's you know it, it's almost like it's the consistency of toothpaste or acrylic paint but it's not um, but it's water based so it's very easy to use it's easy to clean um, and uh, it has a, a really sort of creamy consistency. Do you ever use other um you know, paints or, or anything else, you always are using the speedball water-based for, paint. Yeah, for the, for these types of, um, of printmaking, I use, um, I use uh, the, the speedball ink. There are other forms of printmaking where it is more advantageous to use acrylic. Um, I just discovered something called open acrylic, which stays wet for a long time so you can draw into it. But that's something different. But there, there are a few times when I will use acrylics. Okay, cool. Um, so this is a drawing. I, I um, was in Barcelona a few years ago, and I just drew and drew and drew. I really, there was just so much to draw. And this um, was a collection of stamps that I, I did drawings of. And I was really taken by the graphic nature of the stamps. Um, so while I was um, drawing them, I was thinking, hmm, these could really work out well as stamps. And um, I was thinking, you know, how can I use the stamps and my drawings? So this was a kind of the beginning of, of thinking about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is fabulous for patterns and beautiful design everywhere it's like this absolutely design. yes yeah. yeah yeah and these were done with a micron pen okay so you would this is like a quick uh, sketch that you did uh, in situ and then you you used it later to make a stamp exactly exactly oh. yes cool and then um this was just a stamp that i looked at really carefully um um, and I started to use this as um, my inspiration for a, a carved stamp. And the reason I included this was because it really drives home the idea of what you what would you cut out and what would you leave. And so in this case, the blue would be what I would not touch at all. And I would carve all of the white area around it to create, you know, I would have transferred my drawing and yeah. then... I would plan that the all the areas that were white would be carved away and the blue would be what would remain. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I suppose what you could do is once you've carved this um, and inked it and put it on paper, then you could uh, make another stamp that is the negative of it. You? Absolutely, absolutely. You can, you know, and that's, you know, it's so great that you mentioned that, Brenda, because that's, 
part of the what ifs, you know, that's like, you know, you do something and then that will set off another idea. And that's, that's a great idea, you know, to do the complete opposite of it and see what happens, you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so is this, a, is this a tile from Barcelona or from somewhere? Um, this tile was actually, this one was from Barcelona. Yes. You know, it's interesting to see because I, I remember in, in, um, in uh, Spain and also in Portugal, so much tile work with so many t places have tiles everywhere. Yes. Like tiles with patterns exactly like this, similar to this. And yeah. uh, interesting thing that I think is interesting is when you look at this tile, it's not perfect. Like it looks yeah. like it was hand painted. If you look at the swirls and stuff, they're not yeah. all exactly this. They're not symmetrical exactly. It's not perfect, not machine made in other words. Yes, and I love that about it. And that's also something that transfers so well into carving it because it's not going to be perfect or machine made. Um, it's not going to look like it's made from a machine. It's going to look like somebody's hand touched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. I like that a lot. So um, being inspired by um, tiles, um, I started to work out some um, in my sketchbook. And um, <clears throat> in the front, you can see there's a few tiles. These are actually from Mexico, the tiles in front. And um, <clears throat> so I carved out the stamp. And what I did was I just made a quarter of the stamp. <clears throat> so um, I would take that quarter of the stamp, print it, and then rotate it 90 degrees, print it right next to it, rotate it again, um, and and print it, and then a fourth time. So that's how I was able to get the total stamp, and I was able to keep the consistency of the of the shapes that were in the stamp that way. Wow, that is so smart. I mean, that um, saves you a lot of time, right? You oh, it saves a lot of time, and it also invites so much variation. There's so many things you can do when you have just a quarter of it. You know, it doesn't have to become the 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 four parts of a stamp, you can repeat them in different ways. Um, in the sketchbook that I have below the one that's standing up, um, you can see that it's the same stamp, but I printed one part of the stamp orange and one part of the stamp um, that bluish gray. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I did that four ways around. So, you know, it really, um, there's so many things you can do to change it and to add to it and then in the bottom that was another stamp and I just print you know I, I inked it up uh bluish gray on the top and orange on the bottom and just kept varying that I love the fact that it's a water-based ink because it means you're not gonna have to worry about ruining your clothes or, or whatever that's true yes um oh can you just go back just for a moment yeah. I just wanted to point out um let the yes so behind what I have um, sh um, showing you the stamps, those are the inks. Those are the inks behind it. I have a container of all those inks. Um, and they come in every color you could think of. They mix really well. So it becomes a really nice experience to add color to it. They look like tubes of, they look like my tubes of acrylic paint that I have. Yes, yeah, somewhere. similar. And and to the, on the bottom, uh, right-hand side, um, that's the roller or the brayer. In printmaking, it's usually called a brayer. And that's what is used to roll the ink on. Okay. All right. Cool. And so <clears throat> I was also thinking at the time, um, how can I, I love drawing architecture. And I was thinking, how can I incorporate some printmaking in with the architecture as well? So this is what I had mentioned earlier. <clears throat> this is going to be a styrofoam print, and that's the type of styrofoam that I used. Um, so I drew, so I took my drawing, and um, in this case, I didn't trace it. I just looked at my drawing, and I and I worked from that. You could trace it, and you could put the tracing paper on top of the styrofoam and draw that way. Um, I just chose to to look to eyeball it and to work that way. So again, as I had mentioned, wherever I drew in a line or a pattern, that area would be preserved. That area would stay white or whatever color I decided to print on. And the areas that I didn't touch, that would that would show the ink um, that was rolled on top of the styrofoam, that would show up on my print. 
So the marks on this styrofoam, did you make that just like with a, a pencil or? Just with a pencil. You could use a pencil or you could use a pen. I usually like to use a pencil and not a super pointy one, one that's just um, a little bit um, duller, just so that um, it doesn't punch through the styrofoam. Okay. So the, uh, I guess the next image is likely the print of it. Is it the yes, that yes. one? Yes. And oh. so this was a print of it. And then what I did was I cut out the print and I was starting to play around with the idea, like, how can I bring these two images together? You know, can I collage this on top of the, the, the stamps that I had created? Uh, I mean, the um, tile stamps that I had created. Um, so I, so the next few um, images are just some variations that I did while I was playing around and having those what if moments. Yeah. So the result of, of pressing the, the pencil onto the styrofoam gives you, it looks like a very thick white line is what you, the result, isn't it? Yes. Yes. It's like a, yeah, it's like a, a thicker white line. You can even fill in an area if you wanted to have like a, a larger white area, if you chose to do that. Yeah. And so here are some variations. Um, one of them was actually printed on the, the paper that had the tile pattern. And one of them I had cut out and I was just trying to figure out, you know, how that would look with it, you know, so I was just trying different things out. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very fun. Really different, I think. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Now this is, um, uh, I have a, a pen that I really love to use. It's called, besides the Micron pen, this one is a bit thicker. It's more calligraphic and it's called the Kuretake pen and it's a brush pen. And um, it's what I love about it is that you can get a lot of thick and thin lines with it. And it works, um, I feel like it works really well with printmaking um, because it, it you know, printmaking is so graphic and so strong. Like, you know, you get these very bold shapes in it and the pen, that, that kind of a mark on it really stands up to it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a brush pen. Is it similar to the Pentel brush pen? Yeah, I think it's it's similar. Um, it's just this particular one has just become a favorite um, just because it um, <clears throat> it's a really nice size and it goes. I have some marks that I have on another image to show you just how thick and thin it can get. Um, and what I did with this one and I, I worked on very thin paper. And as you can see, the um, the tile images started to come through. And so I was really liking that and just kind of playing around with um, the trans then tra translucency of it. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And this one I did the opposite way. So um, the last one I drew on top of the uh, printed tiles. This one I did a drawing first and then um, I would mask off different areas. I used the same tile but I changed uh, the color of it. This was actually from an image from Oaxaca in Mexico. And um, so I just inked up the tile. Uh, this is a different tile actually um, from the one from the last image. Um, I inked it up in different colors and I would mask off different areas very easily just with paper. And then I could get different kinds of colors in the buildings. Um, uh, yeah, the different, and also in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Well, this this bottom part with the blue on the on on, on the bottom left, this whole uh, area here reminds me a lot of a uh, building in uh, Porto, the train station in Porto. The whole train station is covered in blue ceramic tiles. It's un oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, it's <was laughs> like a, it was like a giant shower. <laughs> wow, that sounds amazing. That sounds really beautiful. And it was <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> so here is um, I just wanted to show what that. Kurataki Cambio pen can do. And as you can see, there's just such a variety of mark making that you can do with it. So it works really, really well with urban sketching, um, moving into printmaking. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing about the result of when you're working with this uh, carved rubber <clears throat> or even a wood print or whatever is you, you're not going to, you don't usually get the really fine lines. You get a clunkier um, right, right. Line, which is very charming in its own right. And so you need to have a pen, pen drawings that are kind of going to go with that. 
Exactly, exactly. And um, so this was, um, you know, another what if moment. I was thinking, well, it was really nice to, you know, print a whole building and, and have that um, on top of, of um, another print um, that was inspired from my drawings. But then I thought, what if I just took elements of um, the architecture? In this case, I took a facade and two of the domes from different buildings that I saw. And um, what if I cut them out and then use them actually as a styrofoam stamp and print those? Um, so um, that was sort of my next step. And so you'll see that in the next ones. Um, so I was able to, you know, stamp them in different places. And then I had a lot of space that invited me to add, um, to add the drawing to it. Um, so it's just another way of, of incorporating my sketching with the printmaking. Yeah. So you kind of have, uh, you've like stamped the texture and then you're adding the line afterwards. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you get the texture and the color in the stamp and then you can, and I suppose you could, if you wanted to, um, put some thick lines on here with a Kuretake pen. Oh, um, absolutely. And, yeah. I could go much more. Did. Yeah. <clears throat> but then, I, I'm sorry. That's okay. You could go much, much thicker if you wanted to. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Or I was thinking you could get a thinner pen and then add a lot of thinner lines to it as well and get into a lot more detail if you wanted to. Absolutely. You could use a micron or, you know, pen of your choice and get some really fine lines as well. Yeah. Oh, and this cool. was this was another one. Um, same idea. Um, and just, uh, um, you know, adding much more of the much more detail with the pen. So this is um, there's two individual stamps that are used in different ways here. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Cool. I like it. I really do. I think it's so fun. And then um, uh, this was uh, from a sketchbook. Also, these were from Barcelona. And, um, you know, as you can see, I love pattern and um, and I really love working with a thin line as well. And so this is, um, for, you know, using a micron pen. And this kind of leads me to the next kind of printmaking that I, the um, uh, trace monotype. So this was a drawing that, and you can see actually, there's pencil um, lines all over it where I traced it. This was a, um, a, a copy of my drawing. Um, and I um, used it on top of a blank piece of paper that was, um, so it's a, kind of like a sandwich. It's the, the drawing that I wanted to trace then a blank piece of paper, and then under it, a very, very thin layer of ink rolled out um, on a piece of plexiglass. And I drew very lightly on all of the lines that I wanted in, to include, all the areas that had, you know, all the dark areas. And, um, and then I created a trace monotype, which will be in the next, which is in the next image. And so <clears throat> what I like about this is that you can, um, uh, well, one of the artists that I was thinking about, Paul Clay used um, trace monotype a lot. And you can, um, the thing that, that I find really beautiful about it is that you get this almost atmospheric quality. It's um, a little grainy and um, it just adds another level of richness to the drawing. Um, you could also use different colors. It doesn't have to just be black, you know, you could, uh, print, you know, make a plate with ink on it that has two colors on it, maybe, you know, and you could roll that out and then put your drawing on top and trace that and you would get something with a lot of color on it. So I'm and, not sure I understand this one. This one is called trace monotype. Yes. And so it, I don't know if um, like there's uh, there used to be something. I don't know if it even if, if people even sell it anymore carbon carbon paper which oh, you would yeah. put in a typewriter in the olden days and so it's kind of that same principle that you're drawing on top of that and there's an uh there's something underneath that that can transfer so you're pressing a little bit on your drawing or on your on what you're tracing and the paper underneath it that's a blank piece of paper is touching the ink that's on a piece of plexiglass so wherever you press, 
you're going to get the lines and you're going to get the lines and also the dark black areas. And what I love is also you can get such a really strong black, um, you know, area when you press a little bit harder. And then because there's some pressure that's being touched in areas that maybe you're not even choosing to touch, but it just is happening. There's that element of surprise and you get these beautiful little, almost stippled like areas. Right, right. Wow, cool. And then um, these are just some of the supplies that um, that um, I use for, for the stamp making and also for the other techniques that I just showed you. There's a baron, which is the, um, the tool on the right-hand side. It says speedball on it, and it's got a wooden handle. And sometimes you can use that on the back of what you are printing to just help you get a really nice, strong image, a, a nice, strong um uh, print when you're done, you know, so, it's so just a thing for pressing. Yes. And you press it on the back and, and that will help to really get an even amount of pressure. Um, right. you can see the, the, um, printmaking ink, which is, um, on the side and, um, the tools for carving some more stamps here and the brayers, there's two different brayers. They come in different sizes. Sometimes you want a small one for little stamps or little areas. Um, also, sometimes using a small one, um, just like I had printed uh, one area, one color, and another area, another, a small brayer works really well for that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, cool. So I think this might be our last. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. There's two more, um, and I'll just run through these kind of quickly. Um, but as I was saying, I, I teach um, a printmaking class, and um, I... Uh, the prompt that I had given was find two elements of things in your neighborhood as you're walking to class, you know. And so people chose two different things and then they layered them. And the reason that I included this one and the next one is, um, well, there's two more, I think. Um, just the idea that you can layer. This was a, um, a detail from a building and then a traffic sign. Um, and so you can really see how you can take a drawing and then you can take elements from that drawing and create a completely new type of, um, you know, piece of artwork. Right. And there's one more, this one, um, I just wanted to show this one because um, it, again, it's combining two different elements um, and, you know, certainly relate can relate to um, any kind of, uh, a any city or any town, you know, where you are looking at the architecture or looking at, the nature that that um, exists and how you can combine those two things. And um, what I love, this was done by a student and I love that, um, you know, you, you like the leaves might be interesting alone or the background might, you know, the, the, the um, images in the back might be interesting alone, but the combination of them becomes so exciting. And, um, and I think that's also what's exciting to me about using it for urban sketching. You know, you can take some things that you have drawn and then just bring them into an, and use parts of them. You can kind of deconstruct them and use them and create something completely different. Right. So it, it, was this printed with the, um, the speedball speed ink. ink? Yes, it was. And so this ink is somewhat transparent then. Yeah, you can, um, there's, some, there's something that's called a retarder that you can put into the ink and it makes it a little bit more transparent. And it also <clears throat> keeps it from drying out so you can have a longer period of time where the ink is um, workable. Okay, because I was thinking, you know, the two things that you can do is you can either print ahead of time, as some people do in their sketchbooks, they, they will... Puts they, they will I've seen people like paint the whole sketchbook page a, a couple of colors mm -hmm. and then when it's dry they take it with them to you know to do the, some plein air sketching outside and they'll draw on top of it um, right. or right. you can draw you know make your drawing first and then print on top of the drawing if the paint is transparent like this right right and that's why I was showing those the one that I had with the styrofoam building. Um, that that was one way, you know, and then I could also have like, in that case, I used the tile, the paper that had all the tile images and then draw on top of that. So that's, that's exactly what I was thinking 
Brenda, you know, that's the, the same idea, you know, that yeah. you could use it in either way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now this would be the last image then. Yes, it is. Okay. So, um, Susan, is it, so I was thinking it would be very interesting if you were, if you went out sketching and you sketched, you know, some, a partial, like you did a partial sketch, like not a completed sketch. You took a photo of the thing that, you know, you, is your subject. And then you went back to your studio and you carved out the part that's missing oh, and put okay. it in. So you have like the two things. I think I was thinking that could be very interesting, especially, you know, if you're, say your sketch was all in black and white, and then you printed some color uh, bits to, to print on top of it, um, or it could be the other way around. You could make a complete sketch in color mm -hmm. uh, and, and leave some areas blank and then print something black and white uh, from a carved, like a carved stamp and stamp something black and white as part of your sketch that could be really interesting that's another what if that's a great one <laughs> i'm gonna try it yeah that's a really nice that's a really nice way of integrating the two you know yeah i was thinking yeah. that'd be fun so uh adrian is asking how did you align it so that the quarters met without overlapping i'm sure that was one of the first images where you had the just a quarter and then you turned it and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. great question thank you for asking that um well, um, what I had to do was um, the the lining up of it was not so hard, but um, to be perfectly honest, there were times when I would mess up and I wouldn't put, uh, you know, it took a long time to get them so that I was, I was sure that they were rotating the right way. So I had to mark it on the back in one corner so that I knew that that was the corner that always had to, you know, so that I knew which what the orientation of the stamp was because sometimes you look at it and you're kind of you have to sort of think backwards in a way yeah, because it's in your image exactly so it's very helpful to mark it on the back yeah but uh also if it does overlap it's pro that's part of probably part of the charm right it like is yeah it really yeah. is and and also i mean one of the beautiful things um there's a there's um yeah, I live in New York City, so in the subway system, uh, they um, they had an artist. They hired an artist to print the whole inside of the car um, of the train, <clears throat> and they and they were very simple shapes, but they were overlapped. So they only used primary colors, and they overlapped. And that is one of the real beauties of um, printmaking that you can lay a color down and then let you know a shape down of one color and then lay another one on top of it. And then you get these great mixtures. So like, as you were saying, like when they overlap, sometimes that is the beauty of it. Yeah, I, I mean, I know for sure, I just cannot think of the artist, but, um, and maybe it's a graphic design thing, but you've seen, I've seen that, uh, you know, in, in commercial use where there'll be a print of something and then it's overlapped, another print is overlapped. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, sh it looks like it, they should line up exactly, but they deliberately didn't line them up yeah. for, for that effect. It's very interesting, very charming to see that. Yeah. 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 Um, and so uh, Adrian is asking, can you talk about uh, how you approach layering the color? Also, please describe the styrofoam that you used. Okay, sure. Um, so the, the um, well, I learned a, a lesson the hard way about the styrofoam because as any material, you know that you that you can think of, any art supply material, um, <clears throat> there's good quality and there's not so good quality. Um, and so um, I uh, had been using this beautiful styrofoam, the ones that you saw that I, you know, had in the presentation. Um, those were all done with this um, styrofoam where you could make lines, really control it. And then I ordered some on Amazon, a no-name brand. Um, and it just, as I drew on it, it fell apart. So it's really, so the kind that I use is called Invo Art. Yeah. And it's sold on, um, on um, Amazon. It's sold in um, Blick. It's sold in most art supply stores. But that's the one to get. It's really important. And it's like a, you know, it's a flat page. And you get several, you know, you'll get a stack of pages and you can cut them very easily. Um, you can make marks. You don't even have to just use pencil. You can use anything that's 
fairly sharp um, to, to make different kinds of marks. You know, you can use something thicker. If you have something thicker that can press into it, you could use something very fine. So you can get a lot of variety um, yeah. with marks that you make. And, and in terms of the- Part of her question was, can you talk about uh, how you approach layering the color? Okay, so um, uh, you can, you know, with the ink, you can, you can go from dark to light or light to dark, it doesn't really matter. Um, you would want one layer to dry, which would take just usually a, a few minutes, a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes at the most. Um, the, the ink, um, you know, you're rolling it out so it's very, very thin. So it really doesn't take very long for it to dry. It's not a, a very thick layer. Um, so once it's dry, you can um, create another image or put another shape down. If you say, if you were stamp, if you were using your stamps, you could stamp it once and then overlap it, stamp it with another one. And you can, you can also mix the colors. Like you will get, you know, just the way with paint, you can mix any color you want. You can do the very same thing with the ink. It mixes beautifully. Um, and again, as I said, there's something called a retarder that you can mix in with it and it thins it so that it becomes a little bit more translucent. So can you, can you, sorry, I, I'm really curious about this because I think uh, I, I would love to try it again. I, I did some lino cuts years and years ago, um, but I, I, they didn't, I wasn't even aware of the rubber. Um, but I'm thinking, I wonder if I could print just with acrylic paint. You can. The only thing that, that um, I've been using something um, that I didn't show today called a jelly plate, which is, has become very popular. It's a, another, another form of printmaking. You can do a lot of mono prints on it. Um, and they, and th with the jelly plate, you can only use acrylics. You can't really use um, the printmaking ink, speedball ink. Um, and the only problem with, um, if you used acrylics, you'd, you'd probably have the best Thing to use would be the open acrylics because they have a longer drying time so you have more flexibility and you can work with it for a little longer before it dries up it dries completely yeah did you mention where to get the styrofoam sheets um you can get the styrofoam sheets at blick you can order them on um, amazon just make sure it's the invo art um brand because that's the that's like the rolls royce of the styrofoam Okay. Um, and, um, and you can get, you know, probably most art supply stores would sell it. Yeah. Jim is asking, uh, Susan, do you have online videos, um, of yourself doing trace monoprint with the tool and materials list? Um, I don't, um, but I know that there are many online that you can look at. You just, just, um, type in trace mono, mono prints and they will come up. Okay. And Val is asking, how long does it take to carve a medium-sized stamp? She says, obviously, it will depend on the, the complexity, but could you give an idea of times for simple and complex? Oh, it could be anywhere from like, you know, 40 minutes to an hour to, to um, carve a stamp. You know, from, from starting the drawing, transferring it, and then actually carving it. And, and sometimes, one of the things that's really nice is sometimes... Um, in my my class that I teach, um, people will print their stamp, and then they'll say mm, it's not exactly what I wanted, and they can go back in it and carve some more. You know, so you can, you know, I mean, you'd wash it off first so that you don't get ink all over your hands, but you can, you know, you can you can take more out if you decide you want to change your, you know, change what the stamp looks like. Yeah, uh, Carolyn says, would you recommend using paper like? Uh color, watercolor, paper choices, as well as white? Um, I wouldn't, if you were going to use watercolor paper, <clears throat> I would use um, um, hot press because you want a smooth surface. Um, I have tried printing on um, cold press paper and it just, um, it doesn't work out so well because there is, you know, because it works so beautifully for watercolor, all the pits that are in the paper to hold the pigment. But for um, but for printmaking, it's better to have a smooth surface. Yeah, um, yeah. I think I think she might have been asking, or he, I sort of can't remember who asked that. Um, if uh, if you're using if you use colored paper. Oh you, yeah, there's um one of the things that I recommend. Um, it's called um, oh gee, it's blank. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. It's um, 
True Ray. Thank you. My husband's right here. He reminded me. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's an artist also. Um, True Ray paper, and they sell it in packs of like so many colors, really beautiful, beautiful colors. You can get it in um, nine by 12. You can get it in, you know, larger sizes and it's thin paper and it, and, and printing on top of that works beautifully. It's just because, because the paper is fairly thin, it just receives the ink really, really well. And with the styrofoam, I know Brenda, you were asking me before, like with the stamps, you know, do you put it down or do you put the paper on top of it? With styrofoam, you usually put the, you know, wh whatever you've created with the styrofoam, you put it down and then you flip it so that you're rubbing on top of the styrofoam. Okay. And so um, that paper works so well because it gets into every nook and cranny and um, and it's thin. So um, so it, it just um, it really gets the image. Um, it, it, um, it creates the image really like a really nice sharp image yeah. so I recommend that so I mean I, like I suppose you know you could try all kinds of different inks and uh you know I mean you you've obviously figured out and and you know from experience that this special um water-based ink by speedball is your preferred ink but you could probably use lots of different uh media um, like somebody is asking if you could use uh thin inks like a regular like bottle of ink yeah i don't think it would it would work you need something that's sticky and the ink is a little bit sticky so it it just holds on to the plate and i'm just saying plate for whatever if it's you're carving a stamp or you've rolled ink out on a piece of plexiglass you need something that's going to going to really hold on to the surface you know if it was something more watery it just wouldn't it it wouldn't create it wouldn't you wouldn't be able to then transfer an image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, that's very interesting. I I, I have enjoyed this very much, Susan. I really learned a lot. Um, let me just see if there's any other uh, questions. Um, Adrian asked if you wash off your stamps between colors, and I think you already answered. Not well, if anybody else has any more questions. Um. Marion says her daughter taught children to use styrofoam trays that came from supermarkets. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, they work wonderfully. You just can't get when I was joking before and saying that the Invo art one is like the Rolls Royce of the styrofoam. Um, the trays work really well and it's a great way to recycle also makes me feel great when I can use that again. But um, it's just that you, the mark making is not quite as fine as the Invo art, but you certainly can use it and it can work really, you know, you can get some great images from it. Yeah. Do you do, you do the lino cuts uh, or is that sort of not? I, I've chosen, I mean, you can get a similar quality in the um, rubber that you can from the, the um, from linoleum. I just happen to really like, there's a, it's almost like a buttery surface. It's yeah. just very smooth and easy to carve. So I just, that's my, just my, material my preference of materials you know yeah I was thinking you know if you I don't know if you do this but if you if you had your you know a class of uh uh printmaking class it would be fun to kind of try each other's stamps you know like to oh we, we actually always do that we you know like I I invite that because you know once you have it you can you know it's really nice I, I invited everybody to collaborate like so people paired up into two into twos and they shared their stamps and then created an image with the two different stamps, you know, and, um, but you can also do it with a full class where everybody's sharing, you know, it's a great yeah. idea. Oh, yeah. Fun. Well, thank you so much, Susan, for sharing your gorgeous uh, art with us and uh, talking about how to uh, collaborate, how, how to uh, do the two things together, the printmaking and, and urban sketching really enjoyed that a lot. Well, thank you so much, uh, everyone, for coming out to our interview today. And uh, I'm going off. I'm going to be off for leading workshops for the next six weeks. 
uh, in Europe. And uh, if you are new to Studio 56 and you want to know about our other upcoming uh, interviews and demos, please go to our website, www.studio56boutique.com and subscribe to our newsletter. It comes out monthly and all new um, upcoming uh, interviews and demos and uh, vacation workshops are all announced there in our monthly newsletter. Thanks everyone for coming. I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you, Susan, so much for sharing your art with us. You're very welcome. It was great to be here. All right, take care everyone. Bye for now.